Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight with me, Pug Gaming. Last week we had some fun working on the Hovercraft area. It was a really, really fun build I must say. It's something that I've not done before and it was really, really good to have the actual Hovercraft moving around and actually being functional, which is um, something that I always try and endeavour to do in any City Skylines build because realism always comes from the actual way things happen around the map and having these hovercrafts moving around was certainly a good way to show that off. It was also really interesting to see how many people have actually been on the hovercraft as well and in particular in this particular area of rides so that was interesting to see and it's certainly given me some inspiration to um, try it out myself and jump on the hovercraft next time I come across the island which I'm sure will be sooner than later and maybe that time when we do visit again, we'll do some sort of a vlog or something, we'll see. But anyway, let's get back into this episode. So we're going to be doing something slightly different to what we have done so far. And it's actually a project I've been looking forward to building for quite some time. We're going to be working on a very traditional UK campsite or holiday park as you may class it as if you are in this area. So what this is consistent of is a campsite stroke mobile home is what we class it as, but sort of static um, small chalet homes um, it's pretty much what this is going to consist of typically these parks have some sort of an entertainment area maybe a little cafe or restaurant depending on how big the lot is but you'll tend to see these being split up into different segments there is normally a chalet section a static mobile home section and then there's a, the actual camping site where people can bring their own caravans the tow along caravans along with sort of tents as well so we're going to try and show that all off in this segment here. Now in real life Isle of Wight, as I like to call it, there is actually a campsite here. So we're going to be taking inspiration from that, but it's not going to be to scale. We're going to sort of add our own sort of twist on this, but still keep the very unique looking sort of UK campsite um, on board as well. So the actual um, holiday park we're basing this on is a holiday park called Sand Hills and it's got this really nice little um, drop down from the cliff onto the beach where there's a nice little cafe which um, was quite well that really inspired me to sort of build on this segment because it's a nice sort of cute sort of area we can work on and there's a lot going on even though it's quite a, a simple holiday park there's nothing you know outrageous here there's no water parks there's a little swimming pool um, but we're going to try and combine as much as we can in one and there's quite a lot of nice camping and caravan assets already on the workshop as well so we've been quite fortunate with this build there's pretty much everything at our hands to, to work on so I'm just placing down as much as we can work on so here we see these are the static homes um, which we just looked at there um, and we're gonna add a few buildings nothing too heavy there is always in the campsite you'll have a sort of a washroom shower area toilets etc nothing huge because you know a lot of people who do come camping do have their own caravan with toilet facilities but people who just come with their tent obviously will need somewhere to go to the toilet and freshen themselves up. So we're going to start by putting down these static homes here and I've got a lot of experience with this because in my youth when I was a kid I used to come to the Isle of Wight pretty much every other year, well every year to be fair, um, for a good sort of seven, eight, nine, maybe ten years in a row um, for family holidays. So I know all about it and there is something special about these sort of holiday camps that I remember from my youth. They may be different today for youngsters but when I was young it was such a nice feeling to, to go in these little caravans, these little static homes right by the seafront and um, yeah it was very a very nice feeling back in the day. Very unique compared to if you go abroad on holiday these days but this was, this was my youth and this is what it means to me and that's why I wanted to to work on a build here because it does have a lot of fond memories for me. I never actually stayed at this particular um, holiday park. I typically stayed mostly around Shanklin and a few other places, but they are all very similar to one another. So the the whole build itself is bringing back some memories. I'm throwing in a few areas that were from other holiday camps as well, but we're trying to keep it looking similar to the. Um, Sand Hills Holiday Park as well to have some sort of influence on there. 
And how about yourselves? Has there been a holiday park on the island or perhaps anywhere in the UK that resembles this sort of a build? If so, let me know in the comment section below what has been your favourite place and why. Now whilst we work on a bit of finer details around this area, just building up the sort of road structure around these static homes, I asked you all a question last week on where you think we should build next. And there was actually quite a lot of responses, which is brilliant. I love the engagement on the videos and it's lovely to hear back from you guys as well. So I thought what we would do is we'd have a little segment in these videos on this series where we go through some of the comments of the previous questions and see what you guys think because it's you guys that are really pushing this channel and pushing me to build and you know I love to hear from you so let's let's go through that shall we so first up we had a comment on where we should build from Joe Keats and he said would you like to develop Topland and the Needles next they are nice places and I completely agree Joe especially the Needles the Needles is an area that I cannot wait to build it's gonna be a tricky one I think but it's a very unique area that I think would be really fun to build Poison Staff said, Super episode, you could continue the ride town, or the main town is Newport. Personally, I'm from the west of White, which is a lot more rural. So, yes, I completely understand that, and the ride town is something that I am looking forward to building. It's a certainly what we're working on here already. Um, we've started to do a little bit of that. Um, and Newport as well, yes, Newport's probably going to be the biggest town that we build on here but when I say biggest town it's not going to look a lot different to Ride for example um, there'll be a bit more of a town centre of a lot more houses but it won't be you know crazy crazy busy but yes I like those ideas as well up next we have Tylo and we have a message from a German which is amazing and he sent us a very nice message and suggested we should work on cows and in particular the Royal Yacht Club in this project so Yes, Cowes is a very, very pretty place and they are very much all for their yachts, aren't they? And um, obviously not in the degree of uh, Monaco, but it's a very, very nice area to work on and uh, another good idea to add. I mean, we're not going to be building everything, everything possible in the island, but there's certainly some big feature areas we are going to work on and I do like the idea of Cowes. So again another fantastic idea there and if you also have any other ideas on what you want to see next even if it's just a very small part of the island you know a focal point or something let me know in the comment sections below and we'll go through those again next week but let's get back into the build so whilst we was going through that we've laid down the majority now of these uh, static homes we put down some pathways and i decided to go with the rural paths by mac welshman here I could have gone with roads, but they just seemed a little bit too big, and the the pathways, the sort of um, standard pathways, looked a little bit too concretey. It's um, it didn't quite fit the theme that I was going for here. And uh, these these gravel roads, rural roads from Mac Welshman, do lend a very nice look to this area. Now we're going to start working on the other tier or segment of the campsite, and this is the the main sort of towing area campsite and I think they class it as a towing area because obviously you tow your caravans in um, so this is pretty much just an open field you all have your little pitches and your little areas you're allowed to park in or, or pitch up your tents in and um, yeah you just pretty much settle up and that's it you have your buildings in the corner here you'll have like a like I said earlier they have some sort of a toilet or shower room maybe a little shop there as well we can buy a newspaper and a, and a bit of milk and bread and all that you know the, the necessities of life <laughs> um, and yeah pretty much do what you want to do here so that's the plan we're gonna do a bit of tent area up the top and then we'll put down some of these caravans as well um, and there's actually quite a large array of caravans on the workshop now which is amazing you know it's not something that you'd imagine many people to have built and they all do house I think one person so we are also hopefully going to get some nice um, cinematics with people walking around as well and what would be nice as well is when we do have a lot more sort of residents in the area we should then hopefully see a lot more people traveling back and forth to these areas I will add some uh, park generators as well to try and bring in people to other parts of the island to here which will be really good and that will work and look much more realistic so we've got all that to come and you know that's just a little thing that would enhance the look of this area 
Um, and we're going to use the car parks as well, the, the ones from the workshop which just lend to the area. I, you know, I could have used and done some custom car parks here, but realistically these car parks are quite um, conventional and they do work really well for this area. You do tend to have car parks around the area because if you look at the layout of the static caravans not every one I've done that can, um, can park next to their caravan so there is car parking lots to um, to accommodate people's cars that can't park next door to the caravan that's a it was always a nice benefit when you had a caravan where you could park next to it so it's always a bonus so we've done it a bit more realistic in that sense as well and I probably did add a bit too many cars around thinking about it now um, because it looks like everyone's in their tent or caravan but you know it is what it is and we're adding down these um, power blocks as well so I found these in a workshop and I was quite surprised that someone actually had created these because I was actually thinking of a way that, or finding something that I could use to make these um, actually part of my build but someone's actually designed them and made them so that's perfect so they're basically the lots the little power blocks that you plug all your electrics from and into and it's basically your power source so each pitch would have one of those so I've kind of done that and we've added down some of these tables and chairs and these are um, generators I think they are part generators that people should technically sit on those as well and that will look a lot more realistic you'll find a lot of times in the Isle of Wight because of the big cliffs there are around the seafront and the sort of level drops around you do tend to have these really nice quirky little ways down to the beach and this is what inspired me to work on the Sand Hills Holiday Park because you do have this uh, slopey road down to the beachfront and there's a nice little cafe there which you can imagine you can go to and get your your soda pops and all this lot whatever you want to class them as um, to enjoy it on the beach so I wanted to add that in here as well and um, I thought that was a, a nice way to add in here and I raised up the road a little bit because I wanted to try and create the ambience of um, you know there's a sort of a pathway that goes down onto the beach you don't walk straight down onto the sand there is some sort of a, a walkway that's been put in place for the fact that this is a holiday park and this is the main beach that people will be will be work, um, walking down and enjoying time on. So I've used the, um, the the walls here, the network walls, and uh, just put some of the down, the plop of asphalt as well, to um, just to make that look a bit more realistic. Now we're just gonna finish off detailing this area and then go a little bit plant crazy and add some trees. So I'll catch up with you very shortly.
So that is pretty much it. We um, have put down some of the trees and it does make a big difference when you do that, I, I must say. Putting down some of these plants and some of these weeds and all of these different textures of grass now that there is on the workshop, you do create a very different look to what it was moments before and um, really happy with that. And uh, something else that's quite common on the island is they do have these sheds along the seafront which you can hire out to sitting or put your contents, your items, you may have a kayak or just anything you want to store away overnight. You don't want to keep carrying up and down, especially a big hill such as what this one is going down into the beach. But I think we'll leave things there for today. Really enjoyed building this um, holiday park. I hope you've enjoyed watching it and I hope it gives you some inspiration to do your own as well. And if you do, by all means, get in touch with me on social media and show me what you have built because I'd love to see your UK builds as well. Have a great weekend and I will catch you next week for another one. Thanks for watching and all the best.